Welcome to IGM Guru. IGM Guru is one of the global leading online training and certification provider for IT expert by the skilled IT gurus to help them achieve their professional goals. Hi everyone, welcome to the session on React and Redux. I'm your trainer for this particular demo. Um, yep, I'm going to introduce you to the basic intent and you know the content of the course that we are going to cover. So yeah, let me start with my my introduction. Um, I'm Mayank and I'm a developer as well as a trainer. So I have been working with the uh, front-end technology since last nine years and I have been um, mainly into all these JavaScript frameworks. So I've been uh, working out with the frameworks. I started back, you know, 2011 with the basic frameworks that we used to have. So the native JavaScript. And after that, I think uh, JavaScript you know, started to change. There were a whole lot of new frameworks which were coming in. The first framework which came into the market making JavaScript much more easy was jQuery. And after the development of jQuery, there came in you know, multiple frameworks like Knockout, Backbone, AngularJS, Angular, React, Vue.js. So right now you have a lot of options that you can explore in terms of UI technologies. So I have pretty much worked with all those technologies and yeah, during previous, I would say, uh, seven to eight years, JavaScript has evolved a lot. So we are going to continue that journey and we are going to talk about one of the latest technologies that we are going to, you know, work right now, which is React.js. So the intent of this particular session is to first make you aware of what is React.js, Second is, why do you want to opt for React.js? So there are a lot of frameworks in the market which are you know, pretty good like Vue.js, React and Angular. So why, what is the reason why you should prefer and move to a React technology? Although I would say all technologies are great to work with, but why specific React? Apart from this, we are going to talk about the market trends right now. So how is the market going in terms of different technologies? How has the market evolved from Angular to React, working with Vue.js, and what happened with other technologies? So this is a basic intent, and after all the, uh, covering all this, we'll be having a hands-on on the technology. So we'll be, uh, we'll be working with the React program, and we'll see how easy it is to work out with the React technology. So if you are new to React.js, you need not to, you know, you need not to worry about what's going on, what's the background, do you need to have some other uh, domain knowledge as well or not. So the basic, uh, so if you talk about the basic course content, it is, base, it is designed in terms of if you are new to the JavaScript also, definitely we are going to cover all those basic concepts and then we'll be moving ahead with the advanced part of React, React Native. So let me just give you a small overview of the course that we are offering and then we can move to the other aspect of this particular technology. So as you see, you know, the market grew with different UI technologies and then right now what we see in the market is React.js. The React.js has been growing a lot since last, I would say, two to three years. The basic reason is uh, companies like Facebook and Uber are investing a lot. So right now in the market, we have the basic three technologies which are working and doing pretty well, which is Angular, Vue, and React. If you talk about the, uh, so we are going to specifically talk about React. React in the market came up with a concept of virtual DOMs. So we'll just talk about virtual DOM in a while. But what happens in the background is it makes your UI changes pretty much faster. So Angular has been in the market since 2010. And I think most of the companies right now are doing some active development in the Angular technology. But since last three to four years, there is a steep decline in the Angular technology because the performance part of the application is not that great. Angular does not offer you a very performant application in terms of if you have a lot of DOM manipulations, so let's say if you have an application with a lot of moving parts, you have multiple banners, you have an application which deal with some stock exchange wherein data is changing pretty fast. In those cases, Angular is not a great technology to work because it has a very, it has a lot of performance flaw. 
then we move to Vue.js. Vue.js is a technology which got uh, into the picture in, in 2014 and it pretty much uh, it's similar to what we do inside React.js. So Vue and React has a basic same underlying concepts but the syntactical part of Vue is pretty much different from React. Vue.js has its own syntax. You have to learn some custom syntax in Vue.js in order to work with this particular technology. But React offers you a technology wherein the only requisite is to learn a good amount of JavaScript. So if you are a great JavaScript developer, if you, are good, if you have an inclination towards JavaScript, definitely React is a technology which uses, which uses a native JavaScript concept. So yeah, I'm not going to deeply cover why React further, but yeah, you you don't have to learn any custom syntax to go forward with the React JS. It follows a functional approach wherein you create small functions and you can see them in action straight away. So we are going to create few functional components, you know, uh, during this particular training, and then we are going to see how easy it is to work out with. React technologies and definitely if you are again new to the technology you will see by yourself that you don't know you need not to know a good amount of JavaScript or you don't have a great prerequisite in order to learn up this particular course so this is one of the website offering you some you know the trends in the market for these angular technology as well as the other technologies so if we see right now the growing trend is around two basic technology which is Vue.js and React. The reason, you know, so the, uh, uh, we have other technologies as well which is AngularJS and Angular. So the market stake and the, uh, you know, they have increased their stake in the market a lot. This is a trend from 2018 and definitely if you move to the 2019 stack, it is even further. So these technologies, Vue.js and React, because of the ease they offer, they became a language which is very much required by each developer and these days we can see most of the companies who are starting up with their new projects, they are preferring to go with a React technology because for a person who is new to the industry, who is new to this JavaScript world, getting started up, getting a job in ReactJS is pretty easy. So we just need to work upon some you know, basic concept in order to work out with these technologies. So yeah, you know, uh, if you look for the uh, the job stack, uh, if you look for what is what is a market uh, job value at this moment of time, we can pretty much see the different LinkedIn, other companies, so any online job portal, they are offering jobs in either Angular and React. So they, uh, if you are talking about a UI technologies, there is often, people often compare two technologies which is at any moment of time they will talk about why not AngularJS, why React or why ReactJS and not Angular. So definitely both of these technologies are doing pretty much good in the market but they have their own use cases. So you know again once we go with the course we'll see what are the use cases in which we'll opt for a technology like react where is the react doing better than angular and where what are the use cases wherein you should choose angular so again a pretty much if you want a very performant application doing a lot of dom manipulation making a lot of ui changes react is definitely the first option you should look for so this is about, you know, the question about why do you want to prefer React? The answer is the job and the market requirement and the ease to learn this particular technology. So you know, learning this technology is really easy. We have a lot of job in the market and the things go via demand and supply. So if you have a good amount of job in React, then people definitely look for this particular technology. And that's why I would say this is one of the uh, fastest growing technology right now and we don't know about the you know trends further but react is going to stay in the market for a long while to add to the benefit of react we have you know other technologies or other add-ons like redux so they add to the power or the performance of a react application 
so yeah if you talk about the course that we are going to undergo this particular course definitely talks about the different aspects of the react technology so uh, you know enrolling for the course the only prerequisite is that you should be eager to learn you should have a very basic understanding of javascript or even if you don't have those understanding about javascript we just build up small component to have you you know up and running on those concepts so yeah we'll be talking about react basic concepts and we'll be digging into every concept and every aspect of a react application to add power to the react we often talk about redux so this course also have a good amount of introduction to redux then um, you know react has grown a lot in its own you know life cycle so we have a latest version of react which is react 16 point you know 8 6 uh, react 16 so we are going to cover one of the basic feature or one of the great added feature called react hooks so this feature is the latest one added to react 16 so we focus upon react hooks as well so we'll be talking about graphql again graphql is altogether a different technology which helps you integrate different apis so it helps you to fetch data from different endpoints let's say you have data existing at 10 different servers graphql will help you get the data Accumulate those data, provide some manipulation on that data, and provide you a single output. So again, GraphQL is something which is uh, not different from React, but yeah, it again, if you want to become become a full stack developer, if you want to grow your career in terms of UI technology, GraphQL is definitely an addition to it. And apart from that, the last thing that I'll talk about is React Native. That is, once you learn React Native, you'll be very well into how to create mobile application. So those mobile application could be an Android application or an iOS application. So we are going to cover mobile application development in this course as a part of this course as well. So I won't elaborate uh, you know, a lot about, upon the course, but the crux is that we are going to cover all the requirements or all the prerequisite as well as the, all the advanced topics that we have in the React technology. Moving on to you know, what is a prerequisite, again, what we can do right now is we can try to have some hands-on on this particular React technology, and then definitely you can figure out whether you need to learn something prior beforehand or not so we are going to learn from extreme basics we are not going to put anything automatic into it we are going to start with the blank folders and we'll see how easy it is to develop a single a small application or small requirement using this react application so Right now what I'll do is I'll move to one of the editors which is called you know, VS Code. So we are going to put some code inside this VS Code in order to build up something which is visually available. So whenever we start with another, any technology we talk about a basic application saying hello world. So what we'll do is we'll try to create a hello world application and over there in that particular hello world application we'll try to embed more code and you know we'll try to put some styling we'll try to put some salutation hello my young hello Dominic so any sort of salutation over there and we'll try to increase that component exponentially so I'm not going to cover a lot of details but yeah in order to make you understand how easy it is to work with react we can start with the dummy code but yeah. yeah so right now whatever react code you have so let me go to a server so i have a local server running on my system on port 3000 so you know i'm having an application running on port 3000 and right now it has nothing so this application has to deal with two folders so if you are working so let's start from a react application i have some folders over here out of which only two folders are important right now in order to understand how react works so everything else that we have is a part of the setup that you have to do in order to make a react application up and running which is pretty much automatic so react offers you some bootstrap 
some you know, bootstrap application wherein you can have the setup up and running and whatever react code you want to you know put inside this application lies under only two folder which is public and source so what I did right now is I just emptied this folder public and emptied this folder source so that we don't have any prior code into it. We can see that uh, when we can see that we are building up a React application from very much scratch and we don't have anything inbuilt or pre-existing. So we'll try to build up a small application and then it would be pretty obvious for you to see how easy it is to learn React and also you'll get to know how we are going to carry forward the sessions. So the sessions that we are going to carry out is more of a practical base. I don't have a lot of, I don't have any slideshows and all those stuff. Everything that we cover in React would be you know, entirely programmatic. So I can show you one of the GitHub repository that we have. So this is one of the GitHub repository from the previous courses that we covered. So I'll say React. So this is one of the GitHub repository React demos. Over here we have the source folder and component. So these are all the folders and the files that we created during the session itself in order to have everything up and running practically into the demos. So we are going to create a whole lot of application, the files, we are going to look add a lot of code into them in order to see how practically stuff is working rather than looking into some you know PPTs and talking about those PPTs. So this is all practical stuff that we usually cover. So we have different repository. During each course we'll do something, we'll push that in the repository. You can take those repositories latest version and then you can work along with what we are doing right now. Okay so very quickly what we can do is over here I have this local host running and it say it gives me some error. It says I don't find any file in C drive this demo source index. So it is complaining me that it does not have any source file or any file inside this source folder. So let's see for the errors and we'll try to just see these errors and move forward. It says it didn't find any index.js file inside this repository source. So what I'll do is over here in the source file I'll add a new file which is index.js. As soon as I add this particular file I have another error. It says no such file or directory called index.html inside the public folder. Okay so this is the second prerequisite. So we'll say okay let's get back to this public folder add a index.html file and let's see what happens let's get back to this application so uh, you know the setup is running and every time you make changes into this particular setup the things will update in the background so your browser will reflect the changes so right now if you see we have a blank html application getting loaded containing nothing so this is some setup from the background but you don't have anything inside the body. Now let's work out on this index.html page to make something visible. So I'll say in the inside this index.html let's say the e, let's create the easiest index file that we know. So I'll say doc type html which is to denote that we are going to work with html5. Then let's put so if you are if you are good with very basics of HTML you can see we just put a HTML tag which is which is representing the HTML page then we have a header inside a header we add a title let's say my first application okay and what I need to do is inside this HTML outside this header I want to put a body and this body I am trying to put a div so I want to render a div containing certain ID which is let's say root and inside this div what I want to say is I have a h1 page which says this is sample application okay so this could be one of the easiest HTML that we have a HTML having a HTML tag then the headers 
uh, it says the HTML represent the root. Okay, not a problem. So a header tag, a body tag, body tag rendering a div, div containing some ID to uniquely identify it, and a h1. Okay. Let's just save this and move back to the application. So what I see over here is that my JS file or my HTML file is rendering this small div that we had. Okay. Now let's see whether the JS file is coming into picture or not. So what I can do is I can say alert. I can say hello. So I'll say script loaded. I'll save this, get back to my application. It refreshes and says script loaded. So what we saw right now is we had a small, you know, two empty folders. There we added index.js and index.html. We put some HTML part. We had that up and uh, you know, rendered on your uh, browser. Then we had some JS, which is now running. Now let's put some React code into it. Uh, the first line is, since you're working with React, you need to import that library. Which library? Import React from a library which is existing in this particular folder structure. So I'm saying import React from React. Where does this particular folder exist? It exists somewhere in this node modules. So implicitly, I'm telling my index.html to get me this particular object react from react so don't get into details of this particular code just try to make it try to make a logical sense out of it so I'm not elaborating a lot upon all these es6 features and all but i'm just showing you how easy it is to work with these features so i'm saying since i'm working with react i need to import it another thing which i need to import is there's something called react dom from another library which is react tom okay so right now they are complaining with a yellow line which says they are declared but not used declared but not used so we are importing these two files what does it mean that i am going to work out with these two files let me import them from some folders or files which I already have in my setup. Since we are working on a browser, we are dealing with DOM. What do we mean by DOM is document object model. So any div that you render, any HTML that you render. So we have this, this is sample application. This is a DOM. So this is a document object model which represents an object inside your browser. So since we are going to manipulate and deal with this particular DOM, we are going to, in, we are just going to import this react dom library this object which is going to manipulate the dom inside our browser so we'll see what is the you know uh, the effect of this react dom so i'll say react dom dot render no. so if we look into this function it says i'm telling my react dom library to render something Okay, try to make a uh, you know a sense out of it, which is I'm telling my React DOM, an object which deals with the do document object model, to render something. If you are rendering something, you have to tell at least what to render. So I'll say, okay, go back. I want to render a dev containing hello world. <laughs> so this is what to render. If I go back to my application now, it says another error. It says the target container is not a DOM element. So over here you specified what to render. But the thing which is missing is the target, which is where to render. I want this dev hello world to render somewhere inside this root tag. So I want to render it somewhere like this, which says dev hello world. So this is a destination or the target where I want to render. So what I'll do is I'll specify over here what is my target. How to define the target? This react dom dot render takes second parameter which is the target element. So I'll say give me this target element which is document which is a global object in JavaScript. Dot get element by ID. 
get me this element by ID having an ID with root. So from this particular HTML, get me the element having the ID root. So that's the, you know, that is what we mean over here. I'm telling React DOM to render this div containing hello world at the place where we have some div or where we have some element having an ID root. So definitely what will happen in the background, it will go to the index.html. It will look for this particular div ID equal to root and replace this h1 with what we are telling him to do right now, which is to render a div containing hello world. Let's just save this and see whether we thought the things were okay or not. So over here, what we can see is if you refresh this application, initially you will see this is sample application and then there is a flicker and that particular sample application has been replaced by what we want React to do in our application. Okay. Mm -hmm. So again, what we are going to do over here is we are going to tell what to render. So this is the simplest program that we can mm -hmm. write using a React application, a Hello World application. I'll take more 10 minutes to complicate this application a bit further. Okay. So I what I try doing, yeah, sorry. Sorry, uh, my, uh, um, I have a question. So this um, document that get element by ID would is um, getting the wood ID um, from the index.html, is it? Yeah. So document dot get element by ID. What I can also do is I don't want to get by ID. I want to get by tag name. Mm -hmm. What is the tag name? The tag name right now is Dev. Mm -hmm. Okay. So get me those element inside my index dot HTML, which represents a Dev. Mm -hmm. Let's just save this and try running. It fails because it is expecting one element and what we get out of document dot get element by tag name is it says get elements which means an array so I'll have to tell get me the first div that you find during this search let me save this back and again we have the same output so what happens while the react application is bootstrapping or it is getting started it looks for this react dom dot render and it sees what has to be rendered and where once it gets the information about what has to render it will take that particular value and it will look for this document dot get element by tag name inside this index dot html once it gets that particular element it replaces the content of that particular element by what we have inside this React DOM dot render and that's what exactly happened. Let me replace this with an H1 tag and I'll say I want to have this H1 tag. Okay. So rather than, uh, you know, I want to have a H1 tag. Now as next step and in, in order to complicate this function a bit more, what I'll do is I'll try to create a function. Right now, what we are trying to do over here is we have some hard-coded value. So it's giving me a salutation saying, hello world. If tomorrow I want to take off this world and put, you know, my name or your name into this particular functionality, or I want to instruct react dom dot render to render some sample name or some dummy name. So I want to make this component a reusable one. So if I have to make this component a reusable one, the only way that we can have a reusable components or reusable you know, uh, functionality in our JavaScript is to create some functions. Okay. So I'll create a random function, which is get salutation. And this salutation will take as an input some, let's say, value. Or I'll say, you know, Okay, let's first make it easier one. So what I'll say is that this function get salutation will return me a HTML tag, let's say. We'll not talk about deep details right now what, they, what this is called. This is called JSX. We are going to discuss it later, but yeah, I can tell you this is sort of a HTML which is getting rendered back from this function. So what I can say is rather than putting this particular template over 
over here in react dom dot render what i'll do is i'll call this get salutation just like how we have elements in html mm -hmm. so i'll say rather than having that particular stuff display this get salutation anything this get salutation return will be a part of the view that we are going to have okay so now let's see whether this works or not let's get back and again if i refresh it is still working in order to validate that we are doing talking correct let me change this particular name and i can say hello maya so what we are doing is rather than having something hard coded over here i am creating a small function this function is returning me some template that has to render and then you are using this particular function as a element that has to render in your react dom or this particular div that you have selected what next i will do is i will again make this name configurable so i'll say i have a global variable called var name equal to some representation called name and i want to substitute this particular variable over here during salutation so what i'll do is i'll say don't display hard coded name take this name value put this inside this curly braces and it would be called as a interpolation which means take a name value which exists anywhere in this particular scope and replace this particular area with that name value so um, i now yeah just one question um this string interpolation um the single curly braces is it part of um react um, kind of syntax yeah so this syntax uh, you know this interpolation is a part of the syntax that we have so this curly braces says look into the scope of this particular function and you know this particular execution the entire js if you find any variable with the you know key value name go and replace this entire interpolated value with that particular name so right now let's change this name to anshul and i can show you further i have changed this name as anshul and now i have hello anshul let's change this back to dominic so i'll say okay dominic and we have that replaced so what we are doing is we are creating a global variable and we are trying to make this function which is configurable which looks for a name value and substitute anything which is available over there in this particular text or this particular let's say some html sample html what you can also do inside interpolation is you can put anything which is a valid javascript operation let's say 1 plus 1 so this is javascript valid operation you can do 1 plus 1 inside javascript if we look for the output it says 2 mm -hmm. so anything which is valid javascript can be placed over here so i can say some math dot random value and i can substitute that random value over here so we have a random value so this interpolation is just an indication to your application that you are going to talk something to native javascript or you are this is not a template so anything inside this particular curly braces is not a template it's a execution or this is something that has to execute that has to be evaluated so i can say you know uh, i can say put a random number string and add this math dot random to it so you're trying to merge two strings so you get something which is hello dominic random number plus equal to so anything inside interpolation is a sort of evaluation that has to be done so definitely you can put anything which is a valid javascript inside this interpolation so i can just replace this a bit and also let me replace this and make it further reusable i want that my i should send some properties from here so inside get salutation i want to add some properties let's say some 
key value pairs or attributes so any html that you define has got a lot of attributes like style class id you want to send your own custom attribute which is name let's say i put a random name which is mayank gupta now you want to substitute this name in this template that you are trying to render so what you will say is i want to get all the values that you are passing as a parameter let's say i'm passing some age 100 so i want to display this name and age in this particular template that i'm rendering to the user what i would do is i'll say i accept a object so i'll take a props input so this get salutation takes as an input a props value which is object and this props will now contain all the attribute that has been passed to this get salutation which is props dot name and props dot age so what we can do right now is we can put a debugger to see what this props contain i'll just go to the debugger so we are going to talk a lot about debuggers as well, how to debug your React application, how to debug with your normal JavaScripts. So this props now contain two input parameter, which is age and name. So definitely what I need to render is props.age and props.name. So I'll go back to my application. What I'll say over here is I have to first put my salutation. So I'll just remove this. I would say I would want to display props.name over here. And once I'm displaying the props.name, I'll do props.age. So I want to display whatever has been passed as name and age to this particular component. So let's just remove this and see the output. So you have, hello, Mayam Gupta, the data that has been passed. So let me just replace this data with 1100. Let's move back. It replaces with 1100, making our template a reusable one. Why do we require it as a reusable component? Basically because let's say you have a list of employees. All those employees will be having few distinct features like name and age. But rest, everything has to be same like the styling of that particular dev in which they are rendering the name and age. What is the style? What is the background? What what are the border colors? What is the you know uh, the border style? Border uh, you know what is the pixel? How many pixel do the border contain? So all those things have to be reused. So I can reuse this component multiple times. I can say okay, display me a get salutation with this particular name and age, and display me another name and uh, salutation with this particular age. What I'll get as an output is. I have to do a small tweak. So I have to put this inside this small. So I'll just put a div outside them. I'll say they are enclosed inside some div. You have a parent div. So I'll just put a few more stuff. So I'll say you, you wanted to render a div. This div contains further component get salutation. This would contain for the component called get salutation and I want to just close this particular div and this is what I need to have so right now what you have at this particular component as it's a reusable component containing two element with different data we are basically in the process of reusing these classes or whatever components that we have in our application so again it is giving me a small error why uh, get salutation I need to close these brackets which is you know like this and I need to replace this with enter we still have got some error which is because our dev has no corresponding closing bracket I need to put another closing which is this just because we were not putting some correct closings it gave me some error but right now what I have is a component which is reusable and which can be used with different data to render some stuff mm -hmm. and just adding more to it you know if you wanted to have some stylings I could say you know add me a style which is having a property called color and I want this color to be represented in red that's it I'll see 
things up and running with Red. So what, what you have over here is you defined a component which is reusable having its own style and you are just re-rendering the same data with different output. So this, this is called a template or a JSX and this JSX is getting reused or this particular function is getting reused. So yeah, this is how you can work out with React application. Uh, I hope you didn't find any difficulty even if you are new to JavaScript, even if you're new to HTML, definitely this is something that we can do without any prior learning or understanding. So React is definitely very easy language to learn or you know the entire infrastructure is created in such a way more and more that you learn JavaScript, the stronger you get with React concepts. So yeah, um, I wanted to demonstrate this fact that you know how easy it is to work with these uh, technologies. Um, I hope you liked the session. So yeah, this is just a small you know introduction to React application. And definitely, if you want to learn more, if you want to you know see further, lot lot of codes. So we are going to just deal with the codes. We are not going to talk about any slide shares or you know screen shares. It's all that we are going to type and see visually, and we are going to you know interact a lot in these sessions. That okay, let's say if you want to make some changes, uh, you don't want this component to render this way. If you want to have some live changes visible and displayed, we can have a lot of two-way interaction in order to deal with those situations. So yeah, I would say um, that's it on my part for this particular demo or the session that we have. React, if you look online, has got a great market, great users and a lot of jobs. If you want to learn with me, uh, definitely we can you know get in sync again. So any questions you have, any thought process, anything that you have regarding React if you want to share and talk about? Yeah, Nagarajan, you want to ask something? Is there any difference between JavaScript and uh, JSX? Uh, yep, a big difference between JavaScript and JSX. Um, I mean, a JSX is a wrapper. I can show you the difference in this particular terms. Let's say if you were not working with JSX, so what do we mean by JSX? JSX is JavaScript extensions. Why are we working with JSX? The simple answer is we want to make our programming easier. So if I am not using JSX and I'm, and I'm just using native JavaScript, what I need to type in order to display just a simple h1 tag with hello world is I need to say react dot create element. I want to create an element called dev which has let's say for now no attributes or I can add these attributes. I can say the name is uh, let's not add right now. I want to add it with an empty attributes and I have to say that this div contains some text called hello world. So this is native JavaScript. Let's see the output. Let's get back. It says hello world, hello world, hello world. So if I compare this output to what we do with JSX, so JSX is pretty much easy. So let me just compare it. So this is JSX which seems more like HTML and this is the native HTML itself. So what Facebook found is this this particular syntax is very difficult for new developers or people who are working with a React framework. So they are not used to this particular syntax in order to create views. So let's let's just enhance this a bit and I want to say I want to have a dev containing another dev containing hello world. So what I need to do is I will increase the complexity saying create element. Create an element inside this div which can be of type h1 having again no attributes and something which is hello world. 
okay if i want to see this it says hello world a h1 tag but just imagine a big html that you want to render and for each html you have to create something like this so if you have to do this with native JSX, if you have to uh, accomplish with JSX, you just do div. This div contains h1 tag saying hello world. Mm -hmm. So this JSX that we have, it resembles something like HTML, wherein, whereas that particular uh, code is the, the, uh, the JavaScript code. So definitely being a developer, I would love to write my syntax or my uh, you know the template like this rather than doing react dot create element react dot create element so this will give me the same output that's why uh, uh, Facebook plays a wrapper over JavaScript saying okay if you have to work with the templates go use JSX And inside JSX also, I can just use these, you know, I can say, okay, uh, this particular hello world has, to, I have to replace the name over here. I'll say, get me, let's say, props dot name. So all the features that we have in JSX is available inside native JavaScript also. So this didn't work right now. I have to see why. Get salutation and create application. You're putting props dot name um, oh no no taller so again basically I'm not uh, you know we are not used to work with react dot create elements so definitely I there might be a very small fix over here so yeah I got the fix so what you have to do is over here you have to say hello because this is JavaScript, you have to say hello plus. You have to interpolate it by yourself. And this is props. So you don't have this interpolation because that belongs to JSX. And now what I have is a hello myank unshulan. So that is how you work if you don't have the JSX equivalent. You have to do everything using react.createElement element, and you have to deal with all those elements. But in case you have a big, a big good enough HTML, definitely that would be very difficult for you to work with the native JS. Thanks for watching the video. For full course, please visit www.igmguru.com and enroll today.